um, <laughs> because we're going to talk about uh, the James DeGale uh, George Groves fight, a cracking showdown coming coming up in May, Mike. Yes, it is, and it's a fight that a lot of people said wouldn't happen for a number of reasons, but one of them being that they've only had a dozen fights each. Well, James DeGale has had well, 10 yeah. and, and mm. George Gross has had 12. They're both unbeaten. And it's a fight that e even now a lot of people feel should have been allowed to just simmer for maybe another year or so. But it's been ordered by the British Boxing Board of Control. Even at that stage, there are many who felt it wouldn't happen. But it is. And, you know, fair play to both of them. But it might have been a better fight 18 months down the line. It's the danger is that one of them may have lost in between. I mean, Fra Frank Warren is, is um, you know... I mean, obviously he's going to sell it, isn't he? But, but I mean, to, I mean, to you, Joe, and, and to you, Buncey, he's saying it's back to the Ben Eubank days. It's well, it's it, it's it's potentially the start of a Ben Eubank days because when the first Ben Eubank or Ben or Ben Watson fight happened, we didn't know it was about to become the Ben Eubank Watson Collins days. It was mm. just a fight that took place in 19, 19, 1999. So this could lead to great things. My 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 problem with it. It's a terrific fight, and I'm desperate to see it happen. I really am. They've got a great backstory, which will go into more depth before the main 21st show at, at the O2. But my fear is that they, they, they're not experienced enough yet over 12 hard rounds. Uh, James has been the longest distance, nine rounds, but he dominated every single round. And as, and, and as for George, he's only been five or six rounds. These guys are not 12 round fighters yet. And Joe, here's a guy sitting next to us who probably went 12 rounds about a dozen times. And there's a big difference between being great over six or seven rounds and being consistent over 12 rounds. Yeah. I think it's great for British boxing that these guys are getting together at such an early stage, you know. Um, just reminds me back when I boxed uh, Mark Delaney years mm. ago. He was into the Continental Champion. I had about 12, 13 fights. Then yeah. I ch went on to challenge. Um, and then I went on and won that fight convincingly. And he went was on. unbeaten. Yeah, big he crowd. Was, but it's a, you know, this is a great fight. I'm really looking forward to it, yeah. you know. And I'm looking, I think the gale has got to be definitely the favourite to win this fight. Look, we you might have long enough it. about fights that won't happen. Yeah, so. This one is. So exactly. You, you, do see my, you do see my point, though, Mick, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I want to see this. Absolutely. I think this is brilliant. I, and, I'm, and listen, I'd pay for this. And I'm telling people all the time to pay for this. Everywhere, every medium I've got. It's just that I'd like to see it somehow over to eight rounds or ten rounds. You see my point? I'm just not quite sure they're big 12, well, 12 round what, boys yet. We're, we're going to hear from James DeGale in a second. But um, George Groves, in the meantime, has been training for this fight in Miami uh, with world heavyweight champion David Hay and we sent Jonathan Overin to check on their progress at the legendary 5th Street Gym. Well this is South Beach Miami, I'm on Washington Avenue just past the junction with 5th Street. Bus has just rolled up, we're at a bus stop here, it's the 120 that will take you to the Aventura Mall and just behind some anonymous glass doors to my right here is something special. The famous sign is above the door, Miami Beach, 5th Street Gym. Nationally known boxers training here daily it says it don't cost nothing to be nice, the quote of the legendary Angelo Dundee. And above that, in big letters, public welcome. And I tell you, they're absolutely right, because as I just walk through the doors here, there's no security on the door, there's no one checking your badge, there's no one looking at you in a strange way saying, who are you? You can just walk straight in to arguably the most famous boxing gym in the world, and here's the heavyweight champion of the world, David Hay. Yeah, it's all open to the public. That's what I like about it. You know, you get, you know, you get people walking by there and they want to come in and have a look and watch, watch the boxes at work. And you know, it's, got, it's got a nice, real nice atmosphere in it. Look around, you know, on the wall, I'm looking at pictures of George Foreman, you know, Muhammad Ali, you know, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, some of the greats. You know, Angelo Dundee, you know, was based here for many, many years. You know, and he's, he's still a big part of this gym. Some old, old fight posters, you know, Sonny Liston trained there. You know, it's, it's just it's such, a, it's such a great gym. And, you know, it's definitely, definitely the, the place for me. You know, when I'm, while I'm out here in Miami, you know, I won't want to train anywhere else. Well, this place is so steeped in history. The sign outside looks a bit different now, but essentially it's the same place and the dreams of the people training inside are exactly the same. You know, you got myself, I've got a huge fight with uh, Vladimir Klitschko coming up on either June 25th or July 2nd. So I'm out here doing my uh, preparations for that fight. And obviously George, uh, George Groves is uh, fighting James DeGale, you know, so that's, that's a huge one, uh, May 21st at the O2 Arena in London. I can't wait for that fight. You know, George is out here, he's got some quality uh, sparring. You know, he's got uh, Andre Durrell, you know, a guy who pushed Carl Froch uh, to the limit and lost a split decision. So uh, he's, he's a guy who's uh, really young, really hungry, and, you know, he's giving George some great rounds of sparring. Well, here's George Groves. That was uh, well. That was a pretty intense sparring session, George. How does that compare to, to what you have been doing in recent weeks? Um, it's pretty much the same. That's my first fight with Andre today. We were working hard. You know, there's no uh, there's no holding back in the gym. He's given me his best, 
and uh, his best is by far better than anything I'm going to face uh, in, in, in my next fight. Talk about the whole camp out here. I mean, how inspiring is it to look to your corner and there's the world heavyweight champion helping you? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I have to say it all the time. Sometimes you take it for granted. The man, like, driving you to the gym, hanging out with you, you know, talking boxing. He's the heavyweight champion in the world. He's at the peak of, uh, of his sport. He's probably you know, the biggest icon, uh, not only in boxing, but one of the biggest icons in sport in Britain. And, um, you know, he's my pal. His experience rubs off on me all the time. And I find it inspirational sometimes. You know, you, it sounds cliche, you sound, you sound naff, but you do. Sometimes you just stand there and you watch him do pads. You're like, wow. And I feel honored to be here. Look how much I can learn. And yet I get that uh, day in, day out. Now I've had these big fights, you know, I had the big, uh, the big clash with Enzo Macronelli. He was my sort of nemesis in, on, the, on the British circuit, you know, obviously we were both world champions at the time, but it was still, it was still an all British affair. And this, this is what this one does, this is what this, this brings. So it's all about uh, talking to George and, uh, and making sure he focuses mentally, not so much, uh, it's, all, it's not all about physical, it's about how he mentally prepares for this fight, not letting his emotions uh, rule his, uh, all his tactics and rule his head. And uh, I, think he's got, I think he's a very sort of astute a young man and someone who I believe can go the whole way and become a world champion. There are similarities. We've got the same sort of trainer and we set the same philosophy about boxing, um, how we approach boxing, but we just, you know, work on our weaknesses differently and also we have different, uh, which are different things which are our main strengths. David has one punch knockout power, which um, fortunately I don't have, but um, I have um, concussive punching power, um, speed endurance that I think is by far better than the vast majority of fighters out there. and. With that, I can only get better as, as I get older, as I mature. Punch bags everywhere, weights, skipping ropes, gloves on the walls, posters from previous fights, quotes all around. Chris Dundee, no one cares about yesterday's news. Muhammad Ali, behind every great fighter is a great trainer, and I had the greatest. And this one from Howard Cassell. If I had a son who wanted to be a fighter, the only man I would entrust to him would be Angelo Dundee, the man whose name is above the door here and his legend just wafts through the place. Exactly, it's brilliant. You know, that's the first thing that I saw when I came in. It was just in awe, walking around, looking at the pictures, looking at the old posters, reading the autographs of guys gone past, trying to expand my knowledge of, uh, of my boxing history at the same time. So, yeah, see, it's an inspirational place to be. Well, look who we've bumped into down here, Andy Murray. Um, it's not bad being up close and personal for a sparring session like that, is it? No, it's amazing. They're some of the best athletes in the world and yeah, it's unbelievably intense. You're a huge boxing fan, I know. What's it like coming to a gym so steeped in history as this? No, it's amazing. I mean, the, the thing that I, I just love about it is like such sort of humble surroundings. It's, you know, it's not like the facility's unbelievable. They've got exactly what they need. Everyone's in here working hard. Everyone that's in there is sort of knuckling down, just do, going about their business. and. Really, really enjoyed it. It's good fun. Anything you can relate to from a tennis point of view when you see a sparring session like that up close? I think the one thing you can learn is the intensity those guys need to have. And you know, I think in any individual sport, being intense is very important for them. You know, they need to come in and concentrate for every second of their their sparring and their training because if not, they're they're going to get themselves hurt. And obviously, in tennis, we don't have that problem. But the intensity is definitely something you can. You can learn from, and the attitude I think of the, everyone that's in here. Everyone's so just humble, down to earth, and, and working hard. And it was it was great to see. Yeah, and he's um, he's a huge boxer fan. He's a friend of mine, and uh, he's someone who he probably knows more about domestic boxing than I do. You know, every time I talk to him, he's always got the rules in the boxing news. You know, he's a huge huge boxing fan, and I, I let him know George was sparring today, and, he, and, he, and he's travelled down to come on, come and watch him spar. So um, you know, he's a huge boxing fan. I, I'm a fan of his as well. Are you any closer to sorting out the date or venue for yours, Dave? Uh, I should know in the next couple of weeks. Um, I, I know it's Vladimir that I'm fighting. You know, apparently he's, 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 he's fit to fight, he's ready to go. So um, we're just waiting on a... a re it, to be honest, it really doesn't bother me. You know, I, I haven't even been pressing him for a, a venue. It, as long as I know I'm fighting on, you know, fighting end of June, beginning of July, I'm happy. As long as that stays the case, whether it's... I, I don't know, I've, I've heard, you know, I've heard people talking crazy places all over the world, real obscure countries here. But, you know, he, uh, I, I'm anticipating the fight to be in Germany. Well, that was quite an experience for someone who's only had a fleeting acquaintance of the sport of boxing over the years. But as we leave the gym, this just gives you some idea of how close you are to the uh, street and the public here. You walk out of the door, here we go, through the door, and that's it. We're on the pavement. We're on Washington Avenue, South Beach, Miami.
There it is, we look at the sign, Miami Beach, 5th Street Gym. It don't cost nothing to be nice. Angelo Dundee. <laughs> and that was our tennis correspondent, Jonathan Overend in Miami.